Today on Lift Arc Builds, we take this giant metal tube and start making it into a metal sculpture. What does that mean? We'll figure it out. All right, we're off to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of giant metal tubes. Yeah, that's not funny. Another day, another ride in the crane truck. Hello, sir. Hey, buddy. What are you doing? Hitching a ride? Good. How's the old girl? I have to keep on um, fixing it. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, she keeps on running out of fuel. <laughs> So I have to keep on It'll do more that. In there. Yeah. So anyway, we are heading to a storage yard owned by Mr. Mark Pace of EC Pace. EC Pace is a local construction company, but on a giant scale. On behalf of Black Dog Salvage, I'm buying a giant 30 inch metal pipe. That's 3 8 thick, 30 inch in diameter, and 20 feet long. We're gonna turn it into a helical sculpture for a customer of Black Dogs. But anyway, we're gonna go pick that uh, casing up today, dig it out of the back of a storage yard, use Wyatt's sweet grain truck here, and um, then we're gonna run by the welding supply store and buy a 50 foot torch for my hypertherm plasma cutter so that we can cut this pipe apart. This will all make more sense later. <laughs> I love this series of hills. If you do it right on the way back, if you hit a certain speed at the top of the first one, you don't have to touch any pedals until you get to the stop sign. I'm not doing that in this car. No. <laughs> Time to sell. Yahoo! Yahoo! Look at that thing. What's going on, man? Good, you? Good. Boy. That's it. 30, I think it's 20 feet. This is a full length to you? Yeah. That's 20. That's it. Yeah. All right. Game plan. I think we can uh, move that stuff right there and get into it from the side. Get into it this way? Yeah. If he moves this stuff here, it'll make life easier. Yeah, let's do a combo plan. What we're buying today is called a casing. I guess because when they drill big holes, either sideways or down, they stick these casings into the holes to keep the holes from closing up. I think that's right. I can't remember exactly, but basically they case the auger bits. So the casings would be sized to the auger bits, I think. But we're making a giant helix. So figured it's easier to start with a big cylinder than try to wrestle some giant steel into a helical curve with yeah. using a bender the wrong way. Wrong. <laughs> yeah. So the casing we want is the one in the back there, 20 feet by 30 inch. Now one of those tires costs more than my car. Yeah, yeah. We have eight feet hanging off the back. We'll put a flag on it. That's all we can do. I hope, we, I, hope I have a flag. <laughs> That's That's a strong fork. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Didn't even have to use the crane. Oh, we will. Yeah, we will later, that's for sure. Found it. It looks like it's uh, rocket powered now.
Hello! Nice work. It's like uh, natural reverb. Luke, I am your father. I just realized recently that that quote's actually not right. right. He says, no, I am your father. No, I am your father. I was quoting Luke. Tommy Boy. La, 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 Luke. Luke, I am your father. Oh, I've interrupted happy time. Oh, yeah. Quoting a misquote. Yeah. Reverb! <laughs> Feel good? Is that Brothers? that? Oh. Feel good. I got it now. Didn't hear the, your humming voice didn't have enough bass in it. All I gotta watch out for is the, that thing swinging around when you're making a turn. Man, we've, we've driven so many sketchy rigs around Roanoke, things hanging off the back of trailers. You probably don't come here for gas very often because you got plenty of your own. Talk to my wife, she'll agree with you. <laughs> Sorry, Sam. We love you. Look at that. That's the fun stuff. Oh, well, we're here in Arc 3 picking up the plasma torch. I figured I'd give you guys a tour of one of my favorite stores in Roanoke. Got your Miller section. Rollers, consumables, parts. Miller's my favorite. What's your favorite? Miller or Lincoln? Miller, definitely. There you go. Good answer. Team red or team blue? Why is it always about red versus blue, you know? Over here we got TIG consumables, TIG rod, brushes. I want one of these. Ellis bandsaw. Hey, this looks like $1,000 off. <laughs> it's bent. Dang, sure is. This thing's screwed up. Look at that. That's, that's terrible. Made that's in just America. You can't even service it. <laughs> wow. Look at you now. Model that thing. <laughs> this is a family show, Wyatt. That black dog, I've seen some wild loads on a truck, but that is one of the best. Shoo wee. Hello, black dog. Here we are at Black Dog Show. What do you think? I know. Turn it off. That's enough. Enough noise out of you. I am the noise. Yeah, you are. What? Okay, let's figure this thing out. Contractor's creation. Site visit, so that's where it's going. And that's the end goal. 17 feet overall. Well, and it, I believe it says it, uh, yep, 17 foot tall, 12 foot wide. Great. All right, so 12 feet is our cut. For today's purpose, we need to cut 12 foot section of pipe. Yep. That's what the drawing says, at least. Why, wow, you're the music guy. What do you think? Wow. All right, so now we're gonna wrap this pipe with this clever little thing. The curvo mark. The wrap around. The curvo mark. It's got two trademarks. They just got greedy. Look, this one says wrap around. Uh huh. That one says wrap around. That one says wrap around. Uh huh. That one says curvo. Well, the thing said, look, that, that's bigger. That's than wrap curvo around. wrap around. It's a curvo mark wrap around. It's a wrap around. Wrap around. Not a reach around. <laughs> this is a family show, Wyatt. Let's mark uh, 12 feet in as many places as we can. That way we have redundancy. About midway. Spectrum 875. And we've got a long extension cord over here. And we're gonna reel it all out there.
We're all set up down here. Air and power, time to cut. So we're cutting things out. Tay's distracted with uh, with some fans over here signing. Hey, is something on we're, fire? We're making fire inside. It smells like a campfire. Is the stuff inside on fire? Yeah. <laughs> Cam, this is the most ridiculous thing. Fans. I'm sorry. I'm talking. I did shoot a film over the natural. Here we go. This is what was on fire. Well, that's what it takes to go pick up a 20 foot pipe and, and turn it into a 12 foot pipe. We'll take this back to lift art. I have to make some sort of dolly system to where I can move it around. But luckily I got the overhead cranes and I have a forklift and I have a 15 foot ceiling. So that's how we're gonna do it anyway. See you back at the shop. Ready? Just get it low. Get it from, keep it from swinging. And pause with tension and we can rig up something to move it with. Friggin' pipe. Yeah. Yeah. God, now the hard work starts. <laughs> Time to put my money where my mouth is and make some crazy sculpture. Alrighty. Hi, everybody. How are you doing? Today is an exciting day for a few reasons. One, I am filming on a new camera. I have the Sony ZV-1 and uh, it's nice. I got a zoom. Got eye autofocus, how about that? Got a little grip that I'm holding it on. I got a little tired of the GoPro and I wanted to up the quality, up the resolution, and just, you know, this has better stabilization, better focus, better lighting. Theoretically, this is the first thing I'm shooting with it. So hopefully all those things are true. And the marketing jargon is, uh, is what it is. It's gonna take a month or so to get all the way through this project. It is large, not only in scope, but in physical size. So the plan is to take this 30 inch steel pipe and this giant plate of steel and create a helical sculpture. So this is going at a private residence the job was brought to us from, uh, you know, the good folks over at Black Dog Salvage. We're creating a helical sculpture that looks like a, a piece of DNA uh, with the two end bar. It looks like a ladder, but he twisted it. So you got the, the cross rungs, which are, you know, some science nerds out there will correct me. Those are the proteins or the, the ACT or ATG, whatever. I barely remember biology. And then, of course, the, the tube here is going to be the, uh, I'm going to carve that into a helix, basically, with my plasma cutter. Uh, but first, first thing to do is to cut this. This is the mounting plate. This is going to be bolted. Not the, the structure itself will be welded to this, but this will be bolted to uh, the footer, the foundation. 
And so we're gonna cut this into a four by four rounded square with one and a quarter inch holes in each corner on the plasma cutter, on the old shop saber. And then once that's done, uh, we will take that 12 foot tube and clean it up on one end and weld it to the center of that so that it stands vertically in the middle of the shop here. So yeah, it's rather involved. The other thing that could potentially be an issue is the springiness of this tube. So this started as flat plate and um, then they would roll it into a cylinder and weld the joint. And you can actually see the welded joint here and it's a giant weld joint. So <clears throat> there's a chance that this has some natural tension in it. And uh, if I cut away a lot of the structure to make a helix, then it might spring out. So my plan is to leave a, a solid ring at the bottom, a solid ring in the middle, and a solid ring at the top, at least to start, so that I can try to mitigate as much of that spring as I can. And also I will be welding in my ladder bars as I go to further help hold the sides of the helix together. So the reason we're going this route is because it's easier to, to do subtractive manufacturing in a way with this than it would be to, to figure out how to take four inch by three eighths flat bar and roll it into a helix by feeding it diagonally through a slip roller. What do you think? I don't know what we're talking about. Um, oh, working with Wyatt out. Look at this new camera. It's so fun to use. Yeah, it's a good one. Look at it track our eyeballs and our face balls. See that? It'll put a little square around your eye. That's good. I don't think the audience can see that. No, they can't see the display. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Walker will edit a square that follows your eye around. <laughs> oh, it's a slow zoom. Because it's actually recording. Oh, got it. Okay, bye. <laughs> All right, so let's uh, load this plate on the cutter and uh, cut out the base plate. Steve's back in the shop. Hi, hey. Steve. Nice work. Yeah. You can tell you've been anxious to get back to work. I know. It's so yeah. Nice to be back in the shop. Kind of making is great and all, but. No, it's not. No. <laughs> <laughs> 0.6, so this is a 5 eighths, this is a 5 eighths plate. So I'm gonna square this on the table and then double check the drawing and uh, press go together and see what happens. Well, it turns out I didn't have it drawn, so I'm gonna redraw it. And in that case, I might as well screen capture it. So here we go, to the screen, Here's sketch. Doing inch and a quarter holes in the corners uh, for the J bolts that will be going into the foundation. And I'm going to put a hole right in the center just to help line things up. That way, if I need to center the pipe, I can uh, I have something that I know is in the center of the plate and I can reference that. Now, I need to look up my chart. You can probably see this now. This tells me all my kerf compensation data. So 85 amp shielded at 5 eighths is 0 0.095 inches of kerf. That's the biggest one I've programmed so far. So I'm gonna have to add that to uh, my tool library. Hit okay, and do this 0 0.0950. All right, we'll export that. All right, so I'm gonna change my tip out here, get an 85 amp tip on this thing. But we're gonna rock with this setup right here, a new nozzle, used electrode, and we're gonna go. Looks like it's standard settings, but I'm gonna double check. All right, we gotta square the plate up on the table. This is gonna get a little violent. It's a big plate of steel. Ready to watch yeah. the IMAX movie? <laughs> Press and go. It's gonna make some sparks. Oh no! Is 
it off, sir. Did I f up that bad? All right, well, so not as to deprive you at home of knowing what just happened. Cut all five of the holes, and then it went to start cutting the outline, and it missed the plate, uh, which it didn't do anything wrong. I did it wrong. So I d did two things. One, I drew the, the drawing uh, too far from the zeroed edge, which pushed it off the plate. Second thing is it does a lead-in cut, so it pierces outside of the geometry, and then it runs into the geometry, so there's no blowout. Uh, that further pushed the torch off the end of the plate. So what I'm going to have to do is accept the fact that my holes aren't going to be exactly in the corners. I found the line of code where it finishes the holes and it starts the outside cut. So I'm going to change the X, Y, zero, compensate it to the left a little bit, and then resume from that line of code so that it just cuts the outside. I really could just redraw the file and take the holes out, but um, you know, I like doing things the hard way. So we're gonna try that and it's gonna be a little off, but it won't be a big deal because it'll be covered in dirt. So let's see if it works. And see, that's what happens when you don't have a lead in, is it, the pierce hole is just right on your geometry. But for this, it doesn't matter. No, it doesn't matter. I should have done that to begin with. I wasn't thinking all the way. Well, there you go. Good idea with the center hole. Well, now it's not the center hole. <laughs> <laughs> attention with the center hole. I know, <laughs> best laid plans. And the shitty part is I can't even use the drawing to make a template for them, for the bolts. Because <laughs> now I have to make a manual template. Yeah. What do you think that weighs? Oh man, I think it probably weighs every bit of 500 pounds. Four by four piece of five eighths plate. I don't know, I'm bad at like- More than I could lift, that's all. <laughs> yeah, that's the next part, is how to, how do I, it's easy to get it on the table, you just push it off the forks, but now it's like, oh. Normally things get lighter <laughs> yeah, this after is, this. Yeah, this is not noticeably lighter. This not really, <laughs> no, and now I get to switch to my hand torch so that I cut the rest of this away. So now I'm gonna cut the excess off with the hand torch. I swear it does better the thicker you go. All right, there it is. Four by four plate, five eighths thick. What a cut. Shout out to Shop Saber and Hypertherm. Look at that cut. There's barely any bevel on it. I swear, the thicker you go with this plate, the thicker you go, the better the cut seems to be. Love it. So, the crappy part is now, these holes aren't symmetrical, so when it comes to communicating the pattern for the studs and the concrete, it's not exactly right. The holes are evenly spaced. You know, that's good enough. All the holes were cut at the same time, so at least the holes are a perfect square. So now, I'm gonna, clean this thing up, we're gonna level it, and uh, start wrestling that pipe out of the corner of the shop. See what it's gonna take to stand that pipe up vertically and uh, get it on this plate. <laughs> oh, thread the needle. <laughs> That's so insane. That is a good, big success. Yeah. A lot smoother than I had imagined. <laughs> I think it's a lot smoother than everyone imagined, <laughs> yeah. including myself. Hi everybody, back here on the Helical Sculpture. Finally, finally, this week is the week. Today's goal 
is to get the tube welded to the plate, which in and of itself is a, is a reasonable challenge. Before that, I'm gonna weld in a cross piece in the top, which would in what will be the top of the tube, top of the helix, onto which a collar will be mounted, which will support the rebar tree that's gonna come out the top of this. And this will also serve as a lifting point when we go to set the thing. So I'm gonna use some two inch square tubing, make a cross in the top of the cylinder, weld that all up, make a pick point, potentially fabricate the collar, then we'll be ready to set it upright because once I set it up and weld it to the plate, the top will obviously be 12 feet in the air. So we're gonna ease into this thing. I'm gonna slowly transition my mind fully into this project so I can better understand how I'm gonna build it. Still working through the design, but I think, I mean, it is art what I'm building. It's not a scientific thing other than the fact that it represents DNA, but it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to look good and, and be symmetrical and be pleasing to the eye. So yeah, let's go. All right, so here's where we're at. As Wyatt put it, I've made a pizza, but a very, a very precise pizza. So this pizza has four lines technically, or eight spokes, however you want to look at it. And they're all 45 degrees apart, which means there are eight points around this 30 inch circle that are the same degree apart in uh, radians or whatever. And there's a center point. This effectively should fit inside uh, the casing. Perfectly. And it's gonna help me, the way that I figured out the mass of the helix on top of each other at given spacings and wrapping a line uh, from this point is going to allow me to blah 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 so yeah time to cut some two inch make us make a cross and then weld it into the tube and that'll be step one done Okay, so I got everything jigged up here on the table. Uh, looks more complicated than it is. I'm really just making a cross. Making a cross there. That will go in that pipe. I'm sure by now you can envision what it's gonna look like. So we're gonna weld this up, and then we're gonna test fit it. And if it doesn't fit, we'll grind it until it does fit. And then we'll uh, weld it up. The next thing I need to tackle is this collar that's gonna go on top of this cross. This is a concept drawing that I got from Black Dog. It's not really based much in reality, it's just an idea. But essentially all the rebar tree limbs are gonna be welded to the sides of this collar. Because that's gonna result in a giant umbrella of rebar, uh, this is gonna split in half. But basically what I'm gonna make is, well, a collar uh, out of the thickest, heaviest material that I can so that uh, this works the way intended. But I believe there's a lot in this drawing that's up for interpretation. He's patiently waiting. Go ahead. So I found this tote in my shop labeled Big Hunks of Metal. In here, there's a really big section of pipe that I think I'm gonna be able to use. Uh, and this is all stuff from the machine shop, you know, back in the day, so. I get this down with the forklift, we'll have a rummage through and I pick out the part that I think is gonna work. I can see why I labeled this one big hunks of metal. So in here, what I think we'll be able to use is this. As long as that's not cast, that's like a eight inch pipe, half inch wall. So that will be perfect. Time to see if it's cast. Don't think so. That looks like steel to me. It's gonna be some design here, but I'm gonna start by cutting this down to six inches and then splitting it in, splitting it in half somehow. So uh, yeah, let's do that. And then we'll, uh, we'll think about the rest of it. One thing at a time.
So I'm actually gonna try to make a cut on this big uh, Johnson bandsaw here. I think it's gonna work. So I think we're just gonna take a stab at it and if it's a little off, it doesn't really matter. I'll square this up and give it a shot. There's nothing. Look at that. That's pretty impressive. Every time I think about replacing this old Johnson saw, it does something like that. Look at that cut. Let's go see how square it is. A longer square. All right. Wow. That's fucking Johnson, man. Wow. So this is gonna go here. All right, so to split this in half, I'm gonna do a few things. I'm gonna start by drawing a line this way. Got my line. We line this up to that. Make a mark there and a mark there. Then we do this and a mark there. So now, for what it's worth, I have cut marks that are directly in the middle of the pipe. So now I can cut here and I cut here and I know that I have two perfect halves of one cylinder. Now this, uh, I think I'm gonna do with uh, plasma. Well, there we go. We have cut a pipe in half. Look at that cut. I have not touched it up at all. There's almost zero dross. And uh, bless you. So I am gonna clean it up a bit. And then what we need to do is make two flanges like this, one on each pipe, so that we can then bolt these back together. I, I, have, I don't know if but right by now I've explained in complete detail what this is for, but it's not gonna make a whole lot of sense until we get there. But basically, I need to make all the rebar for the tree top will be welded to this. But because it's gonna be like a 12 foot diameter or something from end to end on the rebar, we need to be able to split that whole contraption in half so that we can transport it and then reassemble it in the field. This is gonna sit over this. That. So we can have a lifting point on this actual cross brace right here. So sounds nice in theory. Let's see how we make it happen. All right. So you look at that. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a plan. So basically, what we need to build now this part. So there'll be two of these, just like that. That will allow us to bolt the two halves together. So I'm just gonna draw up some simple, some simple parts that I'll cut out of probably quarter inch plate. And then once this is bolted together, we'll have to figure out how to attach it to there. But I have an idea on that. Hi everybody, welcome back. Next day on the sculpture, and I gotta keep working on this collar situation. So I think what I'm gonna do is cut pie shapes that go in here, but I'm just gonna take some measurements and go from there.
Okay, I've got the chest mount. Give you guys a close-up view. So I hope you hopefully that works out. I'm gonna preheat this because it's really thick. Bonkers right on time. <laughs> AKA always late. <laughs> <laughs> late in a world where there's no real set time. It's just funny. Anytime before now is early. Any Anytime on time is late. <laughs> yep, what a world of rules you live in. Rules are made up. Yeah, except for work. <laughs> yeah, I kind of need the points. Yeah, yeah. That's hot. It's hot. Hey, Wyatt, it's hot. In case you were curious. All right, so here's where we're at. Got the flanges welded on. And now I'm gonna bolt them together temporarily and then weld these guys on here. I think you see where this is going. There will be four of these welded in here. And that's how we'll bolt this guy to there. I think it'll work. Only one way to find out. <laughs> it's funny, at this point in the project, I've cut this in half and then I've bolted it back together. All right, so here's what we've got. We got an interesting little setup here. Got our top collar with our mounting flanges. We got our cross piece with our corresponding flange section. So this gets welded into there. That bolts onto that. Now we got to do a lifting point here. And then in this, we got to make a lifting point for this contraption. So the lifting point for this is probably going to have to bolt on as well. Uh, because if I welded a hoop over this, then obviously it undoes all the work I did by making them able to come apart. I think now I can weld this cross piece into the pipe. So I'm gonna start getting set up for that. Perfect, but
<laughs> Matt says this should work. You got any more clearance up there? A little bit. That's big. Yeah, so now to put it on there, I'll just pick it up from the bottom. But... I think you probably will have like six inches. Nope. Uh, an inch. One. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe two. Let me know when I'm above the plate. Okay. Uh, almost. Yeah. I mean, it's like a game of millimeters. I think you're above it enough, though. Yep, yep. Yeah, perfect. She blows. That is a good <laughs> big success. Yeah. A lot smoother than I had imagined. I think it's a lot smoother than everyone imagined, <laughs> yeah. including myself. Oh, we got six inches of space. Hey. Pick it straight up, pull the dunnage out, and then I can position things. Perfect. Hypothetical. Now here's what you do. I'll sit on the forks. Okay. You raise me to the ceiling, and I'll let you know when I'm in, when you're okay. in. Okay. You feel cool with that? No. <laughs> <laughs> What you could do, reposition the GoPro. And watch it on my phone? Mm hmm That's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, you ready? Oh, that is awesome. There's the view, so I'm gonna bring the fork in from that side and I'll be able okay. to see it. That'll be really That's fun. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> this must be what they feel like when they like trying to land the rover on Mars. Yeah, dude. There it is. Look. Oh, thread the needle. <laughs> That's so insane. It's the best thing I've ever done with a camera. Yeah. Dude, not only is it like weird, but it's practical. <laughs> this is hilarious. Oh, and she's off the ground. Right there. It's sw it's swinging a little bit, so. Yeah, it looks pretty close to this one. Honestly, if I like held it while you dropped yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we're good. I mean, that's like millimeters off the money. Perfect. That should not have worked. No, but it flawlessly. That's awesome. Well, part two is officially called the erection. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's a, it's an accurate verbiage. Yeah, right. They use it in building construction all the time. Exactly. Get your mind out of the gutter. Yeah, this is on you. Yeah. <laughs> it's your fault we're like this. Yeah. <laughs> Next time on Lift Dark Builds, we start carving this big old pipe into a piece of DNA. Woohoo! We 
are making progress. Okay, so now I need to just prep this for welding. So I'm gonna clean the bottom of this. It's already chamfered, like a pipe welding style, or, you know, there's a nice gap for the weld to sit down here. So that's nice. Just gonna clean up in there, and I'm gonna preheat. I'm gonna preheat the, uh, the plate, well, all of it. That way I can make a nice, fat weld to make sure it's straight and level. But anyway, time to make a mess. Today, we got the laser out because I'm gonna start figuring out how to map out a helix. I've done a lot of simulations in CAD on Fusion. The real way to do this, in my mind, and probably the most efficient way is just to start mapping things out. So I know I want a six inch ring at the bottom and a six inch ring at the top, and in between those two rings, I want a two, two stranded helix. Each strand or leg of the helix makes a 360 degree rotation between the bottom and the top. Uh, so that math is fairly simple, but I'm gonna use this laser to cast a perfectly horizontal line so that I can start scribing my bottom and top rings, and then we'll just figure out how to connect them with the helixes. I'm thinking of using, uh, starting in an endpoint and wrapping a string around it and tracing the string. Something pretty simple. So let's start thinking. So we got a line down there, all the way around six inches up. We have a line here, which is the actual midpoint of the pipe. And uh, I'll be doing a line up there because we'll have a six inch band up top as well. And I've got two vertical lines uh, that are 180 degrees apart from each other. So those are gonna help a lot when it comes to mapping these helixes out. Do that top line now, figure out how to map, actually lay out the helix. I'll probably go back to Fusion and do a few more simulations. Find some string or wire that'll make wrapping this really easy. <laughs> I just realized every time I turn the camera on, you're in the background somewhere. <laughs> Wyatt, all we see is Wyatt's like pants. <laughs> yeah, so here in Fusion, I drew a helix and I did it by drawing a bunch of stacked uh, sketches, offset sketches. And so halfway up the helix, the line is 180 degrees away from where it started. And then all the way up the helix, it's 360 degrees back in the starting spot. Uh, I don't know if this is accurate helical math, but I don't care because it looks right and I'm done thinking about it. So uh, all I'm gonna do now is like where the start and end points for each line, I'm gonna drill a hole through the cylinder at that spot. That way I can put a pin or a nail or maybe I'll tap it and put a screw in there. But that'll be what I wrap the string around so that I can pull it around and really make sure that it's in the right spot. And it's being held instead of just like a spring clamp or duct tape or someone's finger trying to hold it in place while I draw. So yeah, that's the plan. Wyatt, you, have any, you see any problems with that plan? I mean, how hard could it be? Exactly. See, now you're starting to come around. <laughs> I used to say that black dog all the time because we were asked to do ridiculous things. Like one time I used a chainsaw while standing on the boom of a crane. Oh. Yeah. They asked you to do that. It was a collective idea. Yeah, that was... <laughs> that was... Uh, it was a collective idea. That was before we started getting emails from people at home going, I'm an OSHA inspector and I'd have you guys, but you guys bankrupt. Not that we really changed what we did because of heads like that. We just didn't show it on TV anymore. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's get out there. I'm gonna finish that top ring and drill some holes.
Okay, so each line on this tube, there's two of them that go all the way to the top. Each has three holes in it. One's an inch from the bottom, one's right in the middle, and one's an inch from the top. Those have been tapped and threaded to quarter 20 threads. So now I'm gonna put uh, some bolts in there and let them stick halfway out, and that will be what I wrap my string around. Now is the moment where we start to see a helix take shape. I think, I think we are ready to cut. So as you saw in that time lapse, I drilled two, four, six, 12 more holes and ran four more cables, wires, uh, which will lay out my actual cut line. So the one I did before was the center line of the strip. That's not actually something I needed to cut. By painting it, by the way, I, I'm using that trick to leave a line where the wire was. Because now I can take the wires off, there's a line left there from the paint overspray, and I can go back over that with a cutoff wheel, cut a little groove into the metal, so it's easier to follow when it comes time to actually plasma cut. So, I did my best. Um, there's a thousand other ways, I'm sure, to map out a helix, but if you walk around it, it looks pretty cool. It definitely is going to have that effect. And so what I'll be doing is, I'll, I won't cut it all in once. I'll cut out little sections, like I'll cut that bottom and then a little bit. And then I'll, I'm gonna, I'll, I want to weld in the crossbars as I cut. So to keep this thing from springing out or spreading out or anything. I don't think it's going to, but you never know. These pipes might have a lot of force in them, a lot of natural tension from the rolling and welding process. So I'll think more about how to cut this thing. So this part has taken a little while just because it's, I wanna get it right. It's a little nerve wracking. Once we start cutting, there's no going back. And um, yeah, there's no going back. So I'm gonna grab my, Cut off wheel, scribe these lines, and then we'll start cutting. Although pretty soon I'm gonna to need to go pick up the round tubing that I'm gonna use as my, are they proteins in DNA? Do you know what they're called? Links. The connecting bars. I know for sure they're not called links. <laughs> I may have been born at night, but it wasn't last night. I was born at 6 p.m. for what it's worth. Some hippie chick out there has lots to tell me now that I've told her what time I was born. There is no hippie chick watching your channel. That's true. Because there's no chicks watching your channel. Unfortunately, the demographics back that up. Yeah, <laughs> the analytics, it says it's like 95% male. Yeah. So there's a chance. The only female is like your mother, your girlfriend. Yeah. Used to be like My ex-girlfriends definitely don't watch it. <laughs> I'm gonna use my Milwaukee brushless cutoff wheel. Not a sponsor, but I'm open to it.
I want to brace as I go, so I can put my first brace at this midpoint and haul a hole. And then I'll pretty much map out my braces on the outside and leave sections of the two in between the braces, not cut, to help hold it together until all the braces are welded in. And then I can go back and cut. Don't go around, leave this whole section. Yeah. You can only go up there. That's true. That leaves a lot of meat, a lot of material. That's it's true. I'll say it a fourth time. That's true. <laughs> he needed something to do. <laughs> I am uh, I'm treading where few have trodden before. So I, I don't know if anybody's ever trodden anything quite. I mean, I know that a plasma cutter on making a helical sculpture out of a big piece of pipe like that. It's for sure been done before. I don't know. I'm sure it's been done in a more difficult way. This is not conceptually. Or just more expensive tools. It's, it's like all this prep work is finally like when I'm sitting there cutting with the plasma, I'm like, oh God. So we're finally here. Yeah. We're finally at this part of the project. All right, so back on this helix, had a fun little detour, cutting some art out. I'm gonna continue to do that, but there's two videos happening at the same time. But really, my main goal is to work on these horizontal braces as I cut this material away so that this thing doesn't spring or do anything weird. So I've got some two inch Schedule 40 pipe. This stuff, pricey these days. So uh, I don't have to bevel these at all because the, the radius is really gradual. So I'm just gonna cut it to fit. Figure out my best way to position them while I weld. Uh, so this first one's gonna take some trial and error, but no big deal. It'll all make sense in a second. makes it a little hard to get straight. So I'm just gonna take an eighth off until we get a measurement that works and that'll be my new template. Are making progress. It's 
getting a little wobbly the more I cut away, but that's a given. And this thing is gonna be bolted to concrete when it's finished, so that'll help. Right now, it's balancing on four pucks in the corner, so that's certainly not helping things. But uh, we can keep going, got a system down now. Man, we're back at it again. Uh, you know, per usual, getting started at 2 p.m. Uh, <laughs> no, but th today is gonna start the process that I'm not exactly looking forward to, which is grinding everything smooth, grinding all this dross off of uh, this, you know, cut edge here, all this little, like, molten metal bits. Th they come off pretty easy, but you just gotta, you gotta touch it all. Yeah, I now mm -hmm. have to touch every square inch of this thing with a grinder smooth it out you know my cut's not super smooth it's it was all handheld but i have a little reinforcement to do i have a one more one more of these pipes to put in at the bottom and maybe an x to put in because it's a bit wobbly now and i knew that was going to happen we just never knew the severity of said wobble i also have to fully weld everything so uh and do another pass on the bottom so really it's just a bunch of fiddle farting around. Fully welding, fully grinding, shaping, cleaning, basically reconciling after all the chaos that was all the cutting and all that. So I'll do that now and see you in a bit. Time lapse, here we come! Montage. Montage. <laughs> Well, it's been a grindy kind of day. Today's been a real grind. Oh, you stink! Been spending a lot of time uh, smoothing out this cut. You know, the plasma cutter, handheld plasma cutter anyway, leaves quite a bit of cut just because of uh, quite a bit of, um, I can't even talk. Wavy, it's wavy and, and rugged and not smooth. So, for more than one reason, I wanted to go over this with a grinder and, and smooth it out. And it's just a bunch of, you know, real not sexy labor, but starting to look good. All of the tubes are fully welded. Um, the holes that I used to pilot them have been filled in and it's uh, starting to feel good. It's still got some wobble to it. You can see that, but that's all right. We're gonna do a few things to try to mitigate that. Uh, I believe we're gonna put some bracing down here, some kind of diagonal X brace possibly. 
Maybe not. I'm not exactly sure how much that's honestly going to help because, you know, the flex is coming from these ribbons and the space in between the poles. But one other thing I need to do at this stage of the build is to cut some semicircle openings uh, at the bottom here to let water out. Probably four in each quadrant, and I'm probably going to go back over this weld with a, a finish weld. This is kind of a root root weld. I may do that, or weld on the inside. But I'd like to I'd like to put another bead on the outside. And then, really, this stage of the build is kind of done. After this, we'll coordinate with whoever's sandblasting it, and then we will take the collar that I made previously and start working with Black Dog and their collection of rebar to make the tree limbs. And then that obviously will bolt on to this. And uh, there's some other things we need to do. We need to uh, get some stainless material and cut out the little tools and shapes that are gonna hang from those branches with cable. Uh, yeah, kind of closer than, we're closer than I realize, which is good. I don't want to drag this thing on too much longer. But yeah, it's looking it's looking pretty good. I'm really stoked with how it looks. It's uh, pretty bizarre. I've never seen anything like this. I'll try to back up so you get the whole view. There you go. Anyway, about to wrap up for the day, but about to move on to the next phase. So exciting stuff. Back on the sculpture. Not much talking, gonna bring up to speed. Back from Black Dog, got all the parts that, or a lot of the parts that we're gonna incorporate into this ribbon. Uh, this ribbon is going to wrap around the existing helical structure in the opposite direction. So this goes that way, the other one will go that way. Uh, <clears throat> the ribbon will be made of two pieces of either square or round bar, solid, to make up either side and be filled in with parts, bolts, nuts, tools, gadgets, frames, all this stuff. Interesting design element, but that's what they want, so that's what they're gonna get. I just gotta figure out how to do it, and here's my plan so far. I'm gonna use this PEX piping to map out the ribbon in this fashion. I know that my ribbon makes one and a half complete rotations, whereas this makes one complete rotation, which makes the math pretty easy, so if it's 50% more rotations over the span, that means you can divide this ribbon into thirds. The first two thirds of the height of the ribbon, it makes a complete rotation, leaving room for another half rotation at the top. So that helps a lot because it allows me to map out where everything's gonna go. I'm gonna make standoffs to hold the ribbon, probably make it free form in place. Need to figure out how big. Uh, the ribbon itself, the width is going to be dictated by some of the elements I want to incorporate. So far the bigger ones are these interesting bobs from Black Dog. Everything else can be cut up and welded in. But yeah, I'm um, going to do some math with this to figure out how much material I need to order for the ribbon and then get started. Enough talking, let's do. Alright, so quick update, I've mapped out a bunch of points on the helix, and <clears throat> what I need now is, you know, it'd be very easy to map out the ribbon if this was still a cylinder, but obviously it's not. But it still has cylindrical qualities, i.e. these parts are still curved and shaped like a cylinder. <clears throat> so my critical heights are 4 feet and 8 feet, because at 4 feet the ribbon makes 180 degrees, at eight feet, the ribbon makes 360 degrees, and at 12 feet, the very top, of course, it makes 540. Uh, so those heights are important, so what I wanna do is put a ring at four feet and a ring at eight feet, just to help me line things up. What I'm gonna do is use Steve's homemade roller, which is made out of a, a machine vise, wooden platform, and a handmade crank. What this is gonna allow me to do is to roll this one inch flat bar that I've got laying around into a 30 inch ring that I can then clamp on this helix at four feet and eight feet to help me identify where the ribbon's gonna land. But uh, yeah, back to the montage.
Sorry if you couldn't see that happen with the GoPro, but I just wanted to get carried away. So, you know, use that thing to roll this into a circle. It happened really fast. Um, but now it, the circle is the same diameter as the outside of this. You know, I came up a little short, but I, this was, I kind of got lucky because I didn't cut this piece. I just had it left over. <clears throat> so what this will help me accomplish is, you know, when I have my ribbon going this way, I'm gonna have to have reference points that are otherwise floating in the middle of nowhere. So this helps me establish a reference point in an area where I wouldn't otherwise have a reference point. So because, you know, I'm gonna start there and the first four feet needs to do 180, I might land here, but there's a chance one of my reference points is gonna land on this ring and not on the helix. So, yeah. That's my thought process there. Anytime you can help yourself find data points in three-dimensional space, you're gonna save yourself a lot of trouble. A lot of guesswork, and I don't like guesswork. People don't pay me for guesswork, unless it's an educated guess. But I didn't finish college, so take that what you will. So yeah, I think I'm gonna call it for the day. And as in the morning, I will place a steel order. We'll go pick it up. We'll start, we'll make our standoffs and uh, start making the ribbon. I'm excited because I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. Maybe this week. Hmm, we'll see. See you soon. All right, I'm gonna go make some standoffs for the ribbon and uh, they're gonna be two pieces of metal with plates in between that will have four bolt holes so that I can hold the ribbon on. Right? Exactly. I can't hear anything you're saying. <laughs> Walker, you can't hear anything. Uh, but being that I can't really work and think with a camera in my hand, I'm gonna go chest mount. I'm gonna go chest mount for this one. So sorry if it sucks, but I have to be able to improvise. I don't wanna think about camera angles. Love you. basically what I'm thinking for the standoff. So it's removable. These two plates will have holes in them. I'm just using them as an example right now. To the plasma cutter. Away. <laughs> These came out nice. So two and a half inch plate. These will bolt together. I'm gonna clean them up. All right, so here's half the material I need for all the standoffs. There'll be four standoffs. This will make two standoffs, and now I'm gonna TIG weld them together. Basically, this, two of these, and then that. It's essentially what I'm building, and then you know, one half will stay with the sculpture, the other half will stay with the ribbon. Hello, woke up sick this morning. I'm not talking, you just watch me work.
It's been a great day so far. So here's my loose math on how to build the ribbon. Because now I gotta make those crossbars that go on the standoffs. So I just got some threaded rod and set it here on the table. I know my angle, which is slightly shallower than the 55 that I used over there on that helix, because this is making more rotations and it's a fine thread, if you will. So, and this is the biggest piece I want to incorporate in the ribbon, this cool hub of sorts. And so, if I put both of these threaded rods at 50 degrees and get it as tight as I can to this, it gives me a measurement here of about 14 and a half inches. So, if I cut, I'll explain that further. If I cut, four 14 and a half inch pieces that get welded onto here this way or better yet something to show you that way oops that way then uh the helix will touch both sides so yeah simple math simple math practical math God, I'm still not better. I'm dead tired after three hours of real work. Don't like it. Go home, hot shower, some vitamin D, lots of water, some tea. But try to cut those pieces, weld them on, and then that'll be it for today.
I still can't talk really well, but we're going to try to make this uh, ribbon happen. I think, I think I'm just going to have to weld it when I get it up there. Dad's on the way to pick up the dogs. I'm going to ask his help on this. Because I don't think I can do this by myself. Dad's here. Hey, everybody. Reinforcement. Back in. Called in the big guns. Okay. It'll go, it'll go to the left side of that standoff over there. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's going to come right over here. Uh-huh. Had an epiphany. Yeah, so these are one of the the small bolts that we're using or Tay's using to put this thing together. But, you know, the whole ribbon has to be concentric. So here's your here's your your, your, your gauge. It helps so it you just stick that in there like that. And then and then you do that every <laughs> three or four feet because we got a bunch of them. That's great. Here I was worried they'd be too heavy and bulky. But. And then you see you pull this guy down and or this guy up and right. and that's your and that, that'll get the, the gauge or the distance between everything's concentric. Oh, that's great. That's it. I mean, it's not like you can put a small bolt in here. You really no. gotta have a real bolt. You can see this from oh, distance. What is that, inch and a quarter? Right, it's big, inch and a half. Right? Yeah. Well, there you go. Destiny. You're welcome. Destiny. <laughs> you still got it. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it is, I still got it. Yeah. The yeah. king of, hey, put this here. Yeah. Well, it's art, you know? It's, it's, yeah. There's no rules, really, except, you know, you can't defy gravity. Mm -mm. If you could, we'd, we'd be on our own motor yacht in Tahiti <laughs> right now. Y'all ready to go? Let's go. go with Grandpa? You have their... Uh... Thanks for the assist. All right, I just wanted to cut in here, in the middle of this time lapse. Just say how pleasing this is and how ridiculous this is. I'm loving this, I'm having so much fun. Let me show you how it's going. So, you know, this whole time I was thinking, damn, these giant bolts are so heavy and um, they're gonna weigh the ribbon down. It's gonna make things way too complicated. I don't know how to incorporate them. Turns out, once we lay everything out, they are the perfect Perfect length. I mean, I didn't even plan that, but they fit perfectly in here. As I'm welding them in, it's starting to make this ribbon look uniform. But I'm just so, <laughs> so pleased with how this is coming out. This is gonna look bizarre. And, uh, you know, just a refresher, just a refresher. That's what we're building. And this is how it's coming. So, I think it's gonna work. This is up there with the most crazy thing I've ever built. And I love that I'm doing it in my new shop under my name. I'm gonna be damn proud of this thing when it's done. So this is working great. It's hilarious. Uh, it's the weirdest thing I've ever built and uh, so far. And yeah, so I'm gonna keep going with these, these big bolts. Then that'll bring me into about lunchtime. And then we'll start filling in between the bolts 
with all this stuff. So I'm actually gonna bring you along with this one. So I got this really cool wrench and it fits perfectly in between two of these bolts. But if you look, the wrench is straight and this thing's curved obviously. So I'm gonna try to impart the curve in this flat wrench. So I've got this off cut piece of pipe. I think I'm gonna, once I get this middle part red hot, I'm gonna press it against here and that'll give it a nice arc. This is actually tighter than the radius I need. So I won't go all the way, but it'll be a good starting point. This is all in theory. I'm not a blacksmith. I've done a fair bit of metal shaping, but um, as I'm sure you are about to tell, I am no expert. It's just art, man. Just having fun making art. Cha, dude. what we did. It's a curved wrench.
there we go. This, this is why I love having a CNC plasma cutter. Jesus, because I can prototype parts like this. So this will go here, bolt in, share those bolt holes, and allow me to lift the tree up into place. That is awesome. Awesome. I'm gonna clean this up. I'm gonna clean these up. So these are the, much like the standoffs, these are gonna get bolted together and that's gonna allow me to split the ribbon into two pieces and have it be able to bolt back together later. I'm gonna clean all this up uh, and then we'll get to welding it into the ribbon over there, making it two pieces. And um, yeah, final, final little bits and bobs, cleaning and grinding and and I gotta poke some holes in the bottom of that thing over there so that the water can drain out when it rains. And then I gotta pick the whole thing up and set it on a piece of cardboard or something so we can make a template for Cam and the guys over at Black Dog so where when they pour the concrete pad that it's gonna sit on, they know where to locate the bolts, the J bolts or whatever they're gonna use. Come along, let's do those things. Okay, so rough fabrication is pretty much done, <clears throat> except for the treetop, but that has to happen after Black Dog rolls the uh, rebar so I can weld it to the collar. So now it's time to get this thing horizontal and then finish some things at the top, finish grinding some things up there, smoothing some things out, and welding on some loops for if we have to use guide wires to keep this thing from wobbling too much in the field. I'd rather weld them on now and not need them versus need them in the field and figure out, have to figure out some way to jerry, jerry rig it all. So we're gonna get this thing horizontal and then make a transport cradle of sorts for this thing so I could get it over to Black Dog. And I guess we'll just have to assemble it outside over there because it's too tall for my ceiling with the treetop on it. Um, they could fit it in their warehouse, I guess, but we'll see. That's their call. I don't really have to deal with that. So, onward and downward today.
thread the needle with a sausage. <laughs> put it together in the Black Dog parking lot before we all eat Peace. food and get drunk. Even though it doesn't look like I'm excited to make these videos for you. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> but I appreciate you guys being here and hopefully it's in some way enter entertaining. Right? If nothing else, it's a memoir on what not to do. <laughs> That's just when the camera's off, <laughs> Oh, well don't be, don't I rip on you enough? Yeah. All right, it's delivery day for the helical sculpture. It's uh, four o'clock the day before Thanksgiving. I'm heading over to Black Dog to meet Cam and my dad. We're gonna erect this thing in the backyard and then it's, uh, it's gonna be their monster now. I have a few more things to do for them, but I'm very excited to get this out of the shop and be able to move on to other things. Drug it on a little too long, if I'm being honest, but being sick last week did not help. So yeah. What do you think, Cam? I think it's a, it's a big boy. Yeah. Excited to see it standing. It looks smaller in the back of the truck. Yeah, it looks a lot smaller, actually. It looks great. Thank you. I think we're going to put it uh, in the only flat spot here. Uh, back in here? Either like right here or in the center here. And we'll just put some heavy stuff on the base. Yeah, this is pretty flat. Yeah, probably here because then it'd be easier to assemble the top. Then we can just throw We got definitely 12 feet this way. So maybe I pull up straight in here, that way we can yeah, this... get to it. So the forklift's a little stuck. They got really soft gravel over here. But we got it out. Got it out of the truck. We just gotta get it, get the forklift out now. <laughs> yeah, it's good. I mean, you come back a little more. Okay. Keep tension on it. It's about to go. Oh, that was the moment. That was the moment. <laughs> yeah. Yay! There you go, guys. Looks good. I'm gonna get that helix on all the the ribbon on. Execute. Cheers, YouTube. I got you. No <laughs> XAs. No XAs. Cheers, Cheers to the Black Dog Cheers. team. Happy Thanksgiving to everyone Happy out there. Happy Thanksgiving. Have a cold one or a coldish one. Yeah. 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 Cold. Yeah. Yeah. Mine's cold. Come buy stuff at Black Dog for the holidays. Okay? <laughs> Blackdogsalvage.com. Do it. Spend money here. Bye.
go back on the tree. Wyatt's, I'm interrupting Wyatt's hammer time. Stop. Hammer time! Done. That's not hammer No. What's hammer time? MC Hammer. Yeah. Now stop. Hammer, hammer time! time. <laughs> You're thinking of uh, everybody dance now. Everybody dance now. I hope you enjoyed that, viewers. Uh, here's what I left off last night when my, TIG to my welding torch stopped working. I've done nothing and it seems to have fixed itself. So I'm gonna fully weld the bottom and then we're gonna grab the torch, heat at the bottom where the limbs, let's say, meet the collar and bend everything out into a tree shape. Weld little hooks on the ends of the branches for the stainless cable that'll hold the stainless tool shapes and then bring it to Black Dog, install it and get paid. Hey! Here we go, weld time. Okay, so the loose plan is that, so I mean, here's what I'm making. Enjoy, look at that. So the heavy ones, we got three quarter, five eighths and half inch on here. The heavier ones, kind of like a tree, we're gonna bend down, they're gonna be the lower ones and then the five eighths will be here and then the half inch will be the ones that stick up. You know, we've all seen trees. So I'm gonna start and based on this rendering, the big ones are basically perpendicular. So that's kind of where I'm gonna operate. They're all random, so it should mix out pretty good. You know, just heat down here with the torch and bend it down. What could possibly go wrong? A lot. <laughs> no, we're fine. Well, behind me is one of the weirdest things I've ever built that will be bolted onto the other weirdest thing I've ever built. And uh, I'm done. There's a separate invoice that's gonna go along with this to cut out some stainless tools that are gonna hang from this via cable. But now, should all be coming together in your mind. But no need for imagination. We're about to take it apart, drive it over to Black Dog, bolt it on top of the existing sculpture, and go, wow, what the hell is that? which I'm sure you've been asking the entire time. So yeah, uh, I'm gonna do the things I just said. See you Black Dog. Bow, bow, bow. I feel like we should bolt it together and hang it all as one once we get That's there. the plan, yeah. Right. Off to Black Dog. Okay, here we are at Black Dog. Good figure this thing out here. to the left. I mean, you still got your shift, so. Yeah, all right, uh, come down about six inches. Not exactly lined up, but I'll have to. Yeah, shift to the left a hair. All right. Okay, now down. Back up a little bit. All right, that's good. Pull out. 
We got it. Arm. All good. Okay. All right. Just stay right there. All right. Everybody remain calm. Uh, I got a bolt in now, and you're still in the way, so you want to go ahead and pull out? Yep. This is the designer right here? Hi. <laughs> Aaron is her name. Oh, yes, my name is Aaron. <laughs> Why you got that socket? Bizarre. We do not have a three quarter wrench. No three quarter. So Aaron, what do you think? It's incredible. What's it like to have your design come to life? It's a very odd sensation. Never had anything anything like this or on this scale built for my design before. It's so huge. Is, it's huge. It's yes, huge. It is. <laughs> Massive. But yeah, it's going uh, to a house that has a pretty high front stoop mm -hmm. um, and they wanted it to be scaled along with their house. It looks fascinating. Mm -hmm. It is a very interesting design. I really, I, yeah. the more, when I first saw it, I was like, what is this? Mm -hmm. And the more I stood back and looked, I'm like, it's really cool. Yeah. Well, it's the, really cool. The people who this is going to, they own a construction business and they want something that included their line of work and so this is called the contract or creation and it's kind of an homage mm -hmm. to construction and all the tools that go into it where did the um helical dna thing come from so it is actually supposed to represent a ladder okay. um but trying to bring something more organic into it so it okay the idea was what if we took a ladder and we twisted it and the closest thing that that resembles is a helical DNA, so that, it just kind of resembles yeah. that, but it is actually technically a ladder. Cool. Yeah. Do you, do you have the original rendering? Yeah, let me go through this 100-page book real quick. <laughs> Jeez, <Gary. laughs> Everything's got to be in the job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh, cool. That one's got the stuff hanging from it. Yeah. I don't have that one. So, from concept to reality. Floby. storms into my shop, like back to here to get my attention. And I, I have my mask on yeah. and my ear, ear protection on. I unmask everything and I'm like, can I help you? Yeah. I didn't recognize her at all. I'm like, what, what are you doing? Sunday, like afternoon. She goes, you can't be doing that in here. I was like grinding and making noise and stuff. And I'm like, you can't be doing that in here. I can see it and smell it across the street. You're a hazard to the neighborhood and stuff. And I'm like, man, first of all, this shop is zoned industrial. Yeah. I can do whatever I want in here. I have a permit to be here. I've been operating a business here for a year. So what? that's not true. Yeah. And also, you're trespassing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, this is a private, so a private property. So please leave. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I have kids, she, and then she was like oddly concerned about my well-being. She goes, you're gonna cut your finger off or, or hurt yourself. And I'm like. Does she realize how things are built? Did this, you tell her she was trespassing? <laughs> Yeah, I said, yeah. you're gonna need to leave. Yeah. Because this is unnecessary. Yeah, she, I'm gonna call the police. I'm like, please call the police. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The city of Roanoke has paperwork saying I'm here doing this. Yeah. Like, and then she, she, what she tried to say was, I have an ID on me. I swear to you what I heard was I have a knife on me. And I repeated, I was like, you have a knife on you? And she goes, oh, well that's what you all wanna hear, isn't it? <laughs> what? I'm like, what is happening? No, I don't want to hear that you have a knife <laughs> yeah. on you. I'm so in the right here. Like, 
but my heart's still like beating. I'm like, yeah, dude, it's just like so this unnecessary. Is so yeah. odd. All right. Okay. Let me get some uh, visual aids ready. Oh, I feel like shit. Uh, <laughs> Great start. <laughs> hey everybody, thank you so much for watching this video, this series of videos. This is one of the biggest projects that we've tackled here in this shop. And uh, thanks to you guys for watching. So, how does a small fabrication shop get a job like this? I get that question a lot. Well, for starters, um, I had some help. So I used to work for Black Dog Salvage, which is an architectural uh, salvage and antiques company. My dad's company here in town. Building custom furniture and custom pieces and custom anything was a big part of the business. So that's how I got really good at basically not saying no to anything. Like nothing's impossible, really, if you think about it. Like if you just split it into tiny parts and subdivide it, you know, you can tackle each little piece individually and sure enough, after three months, you've built a giant helical sculpture. So this was a client of Black Dogs and they did not have anyone on, on their fabrication team that felt comfortable tackling something like this. So uh, Dad and Cam over there reached out to me and this is the sketch I was given. And um, it's a little off the wall. It's uh, <laughs> very abstract looking. There's not a straight line on it. So we got to thinking, how are we gonna tackle this thing? First thought would be to take two flat pieces of flat bar and roll them into a spiral to do that twice and then you can get the sides of a helix. But doing that in a what's called a slip roll is really difficult. And um, the old guy who has a machine shop up the street, as I explained to him what I was intending to do, he just looked at me with this glazed over look, like that's never gonna work. <laughs> and I'm like, well, you're wrong, but he wasn't gonna take a chance on me. So plan B was what we did. We got a 30 inch pipe from EC Pace Company here in town, it's called a casing, and we cut a helix away from the cylinder. Uh, this was actually a concept model, let's say, that me and my girlfriend at the time made. Compare that to the final product. Uh -huh. <laughs> it all lived up here for a long time. So I bid, how do you bid a job like this? I've done this for 15 years, so that helps a lot. But you have to think about all the things that you can predict, and then think about all the things that you can't predict, which I know is a bit of an oxymoron, but you know, you can essentially add 30 or 40% to the time you think it's gonna take, especially when it's a crazy complicated piece like this. On my invoices and estimates, I itemize everything, you know. It was a pretty big budget. I did well. Uh, and Black Dog did well. All in all, I think it was about a $30,000 project, um, and I got a cut of that to, to be the subcontractor. But this thing took four months, and I really didn't do much else, so that money had to carry me through four months of overhead and bills and all that. So I did okay, but you know, it wasn't like, whoa, you can quit, you can shut your doors for the rest of the year. <laughs> uh, it was a killer experience. I love how it turned out. I uh, can't wait to see it powder coated and installed at the customer's uh, house. It is in fact going to a private residence in Blacksburg, Virginia in a roundabout, the center of a roundabout driveway. Follow Lift Dark Studios on Instagram and Facebook if you haven't already and I will post, we're probably not, this, this is the last episode, but uh, we'll post final, probably a video and some final photos on social, so follow us there. Maybe we'll, uh, down the line we'll make uh... Helical Sculpture, the movie. Uh, anyway, thank you for watching. I'm trying to be better about not just setting the camera up in the corner of the shop. As Jimmy DeResta put it, the surveillance cam. <laughs> yeah. Well, if there's any uh, people out there looking for an unpaid videography internship, <laughs> we'll give you all the experience you could ever want. <laughs> yeah, I mean, seriously, anybody in the Roanoke Valley area and they want some experience filming this kind of stuff for YouTube and running a fairly nice camera rig and that kind of thing. Drop us a line. Uh, what's next? We got a bunch of other small stuff on the docket, but I think the next video we're gonna do is gonna be a uh, revisit for the Shop Saver Plasma Cutter, the one year later, what it's been like to own this fancy thing for a year. Problems, good things, bad things all the business I've sent Shop Saber. <laughs> yeah, and on that topic, if you have any uh, CNC plasma related questions, drop us, drop a comment down below and we'll answer them in that video. 
We'll be combing all the social media for stuff like that. But leave us a comment. Let us know what you want to see in the plasma cutter video. And uh, that's coming up. I'm sure Walker's cut the shit out of this, as he should. <laughs> but thank you so much for watching. I have a cough and I didn't sleep worth a shit last night. So I'm going to go home early. Uh, thank you. Enjoy. Hope you had a good Thanksgiving.